this is Joanne. Welcome to my process video. It's a long video, but hopefully you'll learn something. I had lots of fun making it. So here we go. I collect uh, my scrapbook papers to start off and I get a basket and I just go around my and I go shopping in my room and I just keep collecting things that um, are going to go with my color theme. For this one, it was blue and white, and I'll just um, end up dumping them on my desk and trying to decide what's going to stay and what's not. And then I'll again put them back in that basket and work out of that basket. So here we go. Again, I'm just gathering. Is this how you make yours? This is my embossed paper. I try to find, I'm trying to find everything blue, yellow, and white. And this is what I'm coming up with. I have these already pre-cut. I have a stack of these that I um, made in the right size. They're, I think, eight and a half by eight and a half. So that's very helpful because that's the size of the journal that I'm going to make. And I had thought about using modeling paste and I had already made some. So it's good to do a little bit ahead of time sometimes. So still gathering, gathering. I'll go around and I'll figure out what I might use. This I'd made a while ago. This might be workable. I'll throw that in. I know I'm going to need some of these little bulb pins. And how about some of this, this blue and green? Take those apart at another, at another time. Put those in my little cup, and now I am ready to. Okay, so I'm taking a cracker box. And I'm going to get started on the cover. This is one of those pages that I had already um, pre-cut and had them in my pile ready to go. So I'm going to take advantage of this seam. I'm going to do a little voice over here. I'm just measuring as you can see and I'm going to take my uh, glue, my what is it, the three-in-one glue and I'm going to glue it really well and then scrape it so that it doesn't uh, bleed through and then I'll just trim the edges and then cut miter the corners so that the velvet will lay nice on the corners. So I have this buzzing in my background from the heater. Again, I'm sorry. It's freezing. So I'm doing this. So I'm stretching, but not, you know, I don't want it taut, taut, because when I go to fold it, I want to make sure that I have a little bit of give there. So I am doing my best not to make it too tight. Now I'm going to switch over to pages. I have this template that I use throughout making this journal. Uh, first I 
do my uh, little marks on the scrap paper and decide not to use that page. Uh, I do that a lot. I start off with a bunch of pages that are possibilities. That's what I call them. And then I end up sometimes not even using them. But it's good just to get them all prepared just in case. So these are about eight and a half eight inches I want to say I can't remember eight by eight so I'm getting all those pages cut using that template and I'm doing some uh, pages where I have two pace two pieces that don't fit so what do you do I thought it was a big secret until I figured it out one day it's really not a big secret um, just use tape and masking tape covers and if you can get it to cooperate I tried measuring it and cutting it to see if I could get it to cooperate and that didn't always work sometimes I just had to just stretch it out and deal with it a little bit of a pain but eventually it works out And I'm going to spruce it up with a little bit of washi tape. And I decided not to put music to this video just to see if it's something that is more appealing. So I just fold those after to the appropriate size, still using that template. Now this page right here, I decided I wanted to keep that little golden book page intact and not like split it in half so that you know it would be in the middle of the um, binding. So again, what I do is just take the two pages and use some tape and put them together and then I end up folding and making uh, little pockets or not pockets but tuck spots I guess you'd call them so that way um, you still have that picture full that full picture and you have that whole music sheet too so that's what I ended up doing. There's my template again. I go back and forth trying to figure out what to do. Like, you know, that's how you, you know, what is it called? Free wheel, not free wheeling. Well, I call it trialing. You try, you know, trying it out to see if it is going to work. So, that's how I ended up doing, folding, folding, folding. And that worked great. And I have, now I have this, um, again, two pages. I have my embossed paper on one side, and then I have that field of blue on the other side. So I end up um, gluing them, and then using my template once again and I had intended on using that template the funny thing is I had intended on using that in the journal and I ended up in the end putting it aside and forgot all about it so I like to switch gears when I get going um, and I come to a kind of actually I'm not going I'm coming to a halt and that's what I was doing with the pages. So I decide to start working on the inside cover here. And I'm going to collage it. So
So I'm not sure if I should just let you listen to me tear the pages or let you listen to me talk. So I guess I opted for talking. So I have this um, blue piece of paper again that I'm collaging for the inside cover. And I'm going to fix that tear up there with some masking tape because I, I didn't uh, want to go looking for another piece of blue paper. And that's what we do when we're junk journaling, right? We just make do what we have and we work around it and get creative. So I got a bunch of papers together here and I just started placing them and tearing them and doing the typical collage method where you just try it out and see if it works there and glue it down. Nothing special about this, except that there's a few pieces in there. That one had a date of August 17th at 1.20 a.m. Right now it is 12.45 a.m. while I'm filming this. Well, no, I'm editing it. I've been editing it for a few hours. So I thought that would be interesting just to throw that in. Then I throw in some pattern paper because why not? I think it looks great. So, and I've got all these little pieces of um, lace and papers that are in little buckets, little silver buckets, and I just keep pulling them out and gluing them down. This is a ticket from the Mystic Aquarium. I took my grandsons, my daughter, her friend, and my three grandsons. We went to Mystic Aquarium in October. It was pretty, oh, it was, it was a great day. So I just happened to pull that out when I was looking. And because it had the blue on there, I thought that was fantastic to put that in that spot. It filled it. I go looking for something and I find something else and it works out. Okay, so now I'm taking it over to the sewing machine. I was filming with one hand and I just wanted to give you a glimpse of the sewing machine. So this is what the inside cover looks like. I tried some new stitches and I was pretty pleased with it. The one thing that I would do next time is I would glue it down. I didn't glue it down. So now I sew around the velvet. And then I sew the cover, the front to the back, inside to the outside. I love the feel of that velvet. Now I'm trying this and deciding if I'm liking that or not, and I do. I end up loving that. I want this to have like a formal look because I start off not knowing if I want to go too vintage looking, but I went off the rails and couldn't help myself and just started vintaging everything. I don't think that's a word, but I'm making it up. So gluing this on without getting glue all over the velvet is a challenge. Glue just gets on my fingers and likes to stay there. I should wear the gloves that I have. I always forget about them. And it's funny because my my pointer finger where I'm always tapping, the glue takes the skin right off on that. When I go to wash my hands, it, that one finger, it just always takes the glue off. But here, 
I don't want to use a lot of glue because I don't want it seep through and have a glue look to it. So making sure this is fastened well and giving it time to dry. That's another reason why I switched gears. I was working on the pages and then I went back and I let the cover dry. Um, and then I came back to this again and so I'm gluing that on and I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm going to put my pages in order. It's a matter of picking them up and putting them down. I do like to match the colors. And I think you'll find when you do this, it's really relaxing. At first you think you're not going to be able to get them all. And then I don't know what happens. It, it just happens. It just kind of flows. You can feel, does that fit or not fit like that one doesn't fit. And sometimes you switch them all around, but this is really a fun part for me. And you'll see me doing this a lot, going back, looking, making sure, do I like that? No, I didn't like that there, but that's the fun of it. making sure it all fits, looks good. Now I could stop here, right? No. It needs ruffles, it needs lace. But if you wanted to make a plain one, you could stop right there. But I take, I take it over to the sewing machine. I have some um, fabric here that I'm just gonna cut and tear because I want the little raggedy edges and I'm going to turn that into a ruffle. So I will take that over to the sewing machine and I don't have my camera in a good spot to bring it to sh show you that, but you just ruffle it, you know, you just, I just take it, the fabric, lay it down on the, um, make sure it's a a cardstock because if you try to do it on the paper sometimes they tear and I just just use um, a, I the point of the scissors to push the fabric forward as I'm sewing and it just ruffles for me I'm trialing this and trying to decide if I want that or not and I do end up making a ruffle with that so now I have all of the pages trimmed. I think that's good enough. Um, what I'm going to do next is put the binding in. And I'm trying to decide. I don't really want to use the waxed thread. I am going to try um, some sorry silk. So I will dig that out. Okay, so I made my own drips. It's just some nice soft cotton. Took it, um, tore it, and sewed it on my sewing machine, just like they do with the sorry silk. They sew them together and I'm hoping this is gonna work. So let's see. You never know unless you try, right? Every, just about every journal that I do, I try, I challenge myself to something new. So I think I'm going to eyeball it. Put the, oh, 
I hate poking through this pretty lace, but you know, it's got to be done. Yes, it's working. Okay, so now, do I want the bow on the inside? I think I want the bow on the inside. So let's think about this. Go through here. Oh, it's still going to go. It's going to cover up that velvet. I was trying to make it formal. It's as formal as a handmade item can be coming from me. How's that sound? Take this, come through here, and you can watch me struggle. <laughs> or maybe it'll be smooth as silk, smooth as cotton. All right, now I'll let this go. Go in here and come out here. So my friend has two girls that are all grown up and she has grandchildren but of course our kids grew up together went to church together and I remember her two little girls so when I saw this this reminds me of one of her little girls and she's not a little girl now she's a mama of four but I just had to have that in there. This is why I have my pliers. And it's easy to go through a single layer. So once I get that, look at me. Getting all stuck right when I'm coming down to the finish line. Okay. See? Oh, there we go. Now I can just take this and pull this out like this. And then, voila! How about that? I know I'm not the first one to do this, and I won't be the last. But this is the first time I've done this. First time I've used this method. And I did this method, like I said, because I don't want to cover up that nice velvet with my cotton thread. Although, you know, cotton thread's nice. I like that look too. But here we go. How's that? I'm liking it. I'm liking this. I can get rid of this now. And it's not bad. Nah. I could even put a little something something on there. Okay, binding's done. Now I'm moving along, putting some pockets here, doing some embellishing, and um, trying to spruce it up here. So this is a, a pocket that I'm just inking and I'm going to glue it down. Before I do that, I feel like it's missing something. So, piano paper. So, that doesn't look so good. So, what do we do? Play around with the paper. Just playing with paper's fun. So, let's see. Is that going to work? That kind of looks like it'll work. Let's get the glue out. Get this glued down and see how this looks. I'm not going to ink the piano paper because I think piano paper speaks for itself and it doesn't need to be inked, at least in this case. So there we go. Get it the right direction. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking that. But I'm still thinking it needs something. This? Nah. Hmm. No. I don't want to cover up what it says. Button? Let's see. Do I decide on a button? Yeah, I do. 
normally I put thread in the buttons to make it look like they're sewed down even if they're only glued but I didn't want to take the time because I lost a lot of things today and I had to go searching for them so I wasn't going to go searching for the thread that I was had in mind yeah I, I I lose things in my room and it's my own fault so making another pocket here I started off with this this is from Daphne's journal I started off because I liked the word travel and then I got over there with my sewing machine and I ended up covering up the whole thing so I did some gold painting and I can never wait so I got a little more gold on than I needed to that's okay these blue Navy blue are really pretty, but I'm not going to be able to do much writing, I think, unless you use a dark, dark marker. So, so I'm going to do this. A little score. My hole puncher is very cheap and crappy. Just got it too from Hobby Lobby. Let's see if it works now. It works now. Maybe it needed a little embarrassment. Come on. There. Well, what do you know? Now, take this baby out. Could have put a f could have put a few more pages in there, but I didn't want it so bulky. Didn't I suppose I should have checked it before I cut it. Oh well, it's there now, doing its thing. There. Oh, how sweet. Love this room. I just come in and sit right down there for a minute and take off my shoes. This is one of my favorite Tim Holtz. I want to cover up that. But that might pick up that. Just to throw things off a bit, right? Make them interesting. I'm doing it. Pattern paper here and there. I'm liking the way this is going. Just taking a now this because she likes tea. Uh, I'm gonna put it right here. It's not a ton of pink because. Pink is my thing. I'm not sure that it's hers. So 
So these are the questions that I ask when I'm doing a journal for somebody. So I figured I'd put them in here and have it be part of her sentiments. So I glue this down and because it's um, some paper that I paperwork that I had, I didn't like what it said on the inside. Not that it was bad, but it just didn't fit. So I was, as I'm gluing this, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with that? I'm going to have to cover it up somehow. So I keep picking up papers and decide to just turn it into a flap, um, a flip out or a flap, whatever you want to call it. And I love using um, deli paper, but I didn't like how I overlapped these two, so I had to keep working with them to make it uh, pleasing. And this was just laying on the desk, and I love it when I just pick something up that's on the desk that um, is just being messy, and it ends up working. So that's what that happened there. That that worked. So I'm going to ink this music page and I'm going to put that down. And in the end, when you see the flip through, you're going to see how I come up with something else with this because I just wasn't finished with it. And I thought it, I think you're going to like it. So I'm doing some more some collaging and still not liking it just being plain like that so sometimes that's what we have to do right we just have to keep playing with papers and this is a long video but this is a process video and I'm hoping that you're enjoying it I'm hoping somebody's enjoying it so I enjoyed it I enjoyed making it I enjoyed making this journal. This is my challenge, making jewelry for the journal because uh, I have a little challenge with, although it seems like I made it look easy right there, sometimes I can't get those pliers to work the way I want them to. Um, but I was, I, I really wanted to make a lot of jewelry for this journal because I wanted this journal to be really really special and I made the journal uh, some jewelry for my last one and I thought you know I really need to make more jewelry for the journals because they just add so much and it's really not that hard so when I make it I try to place it in you know not in a place in a place that's a little sparse, I want to even it out. So I sometimes start in the back and then work my way to the front. Now, back to this page again. I decide to use this blue. I love this. I got this from, I want to say Joanne's. And I make this a flip out and so I just glued this down right in one spot there and no need to ink it. It just was pretty. Um, this is that paper that I couldn't figure out where to place it earlier. But it ended up being perfect here. So there's that. This is the beautiful blue velvet.
I don't know about you, but I love looking at the sides in all of the jewelry. It's just dripping with jewelry. Look at that. Okay, you can fast forward if you don't like that. But I love it. I loved this. Here we go. little tags. So sweet. How sweet is that? My little gold I'm still experimenting with. So the color theme was mostly blue, white, and yellow. I won't be part picking, uh, showing you all the every single thing because you can see for yourself without me saying the buttons here and there's piano paper here and there's a pocket here you can see so oh this came undone let's just fix that real quick there we go now this is a flyer from a place that no longer exists in Rhode Island. I love that gold. I just think it adds so much. Isn't that gold something? There's a little bit of that yellow picking that up. Oh. And a few cute, really sweet poems. First time I'm using, now it's the second time I'm using Edith Holden's. I added a little gold. This is a little secret place to write. So you just undo this and then you have your secret place. And I like it because it says we'll have a blue room and because the journal is predominantly blue, that was appropriate. This is a nice um, friend poem. Oh dear, does it get a little glue on it? So I thought that was nice. Okay, there we go. Mm. I have not counted how many pages this is. After. This is from somebody who um, who's passed away and her husband dropped us all off at a consignment store and this is one of the pieces and I just thought I would put it in there to honor her. We got some tea and some A lot of places to journal, a lot of places to explore. Let's see if we're not my T 
too close. I wanted to keep this because I loved this. This, you can tuck something in there if you so choose. It's got to have the right size, but I thought that was nice. Oh, I've got a couple little floating pockets that I made that I have to remember to put in here somewhere. I don't think that's the right spot for that. Okay, so here we go. That's my bride's boots. Do I want this in here? No, I do not. My embossed paper. Do I want it here? Oh yeah, I like that yellow and I like that. All I need is a paper clip, which I'll find after. So I'll just leave that in there. A little bit of yellow. Small amount of yellow. Just enough, I think. And this beautiful postcard. I'll show you. Just love that. Is that 1904? Could be. And this is my inside cover. I show you my inside cover in the front. Tried using my stitches and I was pretty pleased with that. So that's it for my blue velvet journal that will be finding a home very soon. Thanks for watching and hanging in there with me. It's a very long video. I'll see you in the next one.